Salve, friend. I'm Octavia. Welcome to life under the Golden Rule. It's a ghastly thing, is it not? How are you faring so far? That's good, in a sense. If you're not on edge, you've not been paying attention. But on the bright side, once you've been here a few months, it's... Well, it's slightly less terrifying anyway. We've all been where you are now. I remember when I first arrived. I used to lay awake at night, contemplating the big questions. Why am I here? Is there a way out? What is the golden rule, and who or what is responsible for it? I still don't have any of the answers, I'm afraid. I don't think anybody does. But I'm happy to share with you what I've learned. Here, in this place, the Magistrate has me earning my keep by cleaning and pruning the gardens. It's not quite how I expected my life to go. I used to live in a lovely villa on the banks of the Tiber. I was even betrothed to a handsome young man from a prominent family. But long hours of menial labour for the good of the community has its own charms too, I suppose. Oh, much the same way as many of the others. When the fires came to Rome, seven months ago. My family and I fled for the Tiber, hoping to escape on a barge. We were among the fortunate ones with enough coins for passage, but unfortunately, there were a lot of desperate people, and they boarded before we could depart. A scuffle broke out, and I was pushed overboard. The last thing I remember was the water, rising up to hit my cheekbone. I woke up by the river, near that shrine, and stumbled across this place. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure it's all part of God's plan for me. Oh yes, of course. A slip of the tongue. If you like. I'm afraid not, although I did once hear someone gossiping down at Aurelia's tavern about a possible way out. I don't put a lot of stock in such rumours, but if you're desperate and wealthy, you could look into it, I suppose. If that doesn't work, then I suppose we're all stuck here until gods, uh, the gods, decide our fate. I hope it works out. Hmm. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I think about those words a lot. I'd like to think that if we all love our neighbours as ourselves, and do to them as we'd have them do to us, then we'll all be fine. But on the other hand, I was always taught the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth, and that all of us are born with a tendency towards sin. And that's where I get stuck. Is it true? Are we born with a tendency towards sin? You don't think that's a little naive? Hmm. I suppose you've never seen what I've seen. Innocent men and women, torn apart in arenas while thousands of Romans look on and cheer. Hmm. I wish I shared your faith. Please, please keep that to yourself. I know you're not from around here, but... Things are very difficult for us right now. There was a terrible fire in Rome last year, and our emperor decided to make us his scapegoats. There were... executions. It was horrible. Oh, thank you. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. All right, well, it was lovely to meet you. I look forward to getting to know you better over the coming months. And if you ever... I can't believe this is how it ends. Oh no. No. No, 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 no. Wolf Pierce, what are you doing? Get back from there. If you lose your balance, you'll fall. That's the idea. What? Why? Why would you want that? Why do you think I'm stuck for the rest of my life working for a man who treats me like an animal? I know, I know things are hard for you right now. They're hard for all of us. We're all in this together, Ulpius. Please, please just think this through. If you do this, it could be the sin that seals all of our fates. 
Is that what you want? I'm sorry, but I just don't care anymore. Please, Ulpius. Help him. If he goes through with it, it could be the end for us all. I don't know what to do. I've never had to deal with this sort of thing. Please, you need to talk to him. I don't know, but it's a crime for slaves to take their own lives. And a debt bondsman isn't far off. Thank you. And please, choose your words carefully. Let me guess. You're going to lecture me on how suicide is a crime against the Empire. I screwed up my life. That's what's wrong. I borrowed money and when I couldn't pay it back, I wound up in debt bondage. I'll be stuck slaving away for that Culus Cumulatis Maliolus for the rest of my life. I am out. Wherever you are, Centilla, my love, I'm sorry. Opius, no! He went through with it. I, oh Lord, that poor lamb. Well, I suppose it means suicide isn't a sin under the Golden Rule. So I guess that means whichever god is responsible for it, it isn't mine. I'll have to let everyone know what happened. And I guess Maliolus will have to clean up the mess in his villa. It's of his own making, after all. And I'd best pray for poor Ulpius. Hmm. <laughs> 
Ah, you again. No idea what you're talking about? Yes, so what? What are you going to do about it? And why should I? The one true God says that for man to lie with another man is an abomination. His presence here is a, a threat to us all. A well, I don't know. Maybe God hasn't noticed yet. But when he does, we're going to have a problem. There is only one true God. And he laid waste to Sodom and Gomorrah. Because of exactly this kind of thing. I am doing that. If I was about to get everyone else killed, I would want someone to stop me. I don't like where this is going. I have no idea what you're talking about. And unless you want your jaw broken, I think it's best if you don't ever talk to me again. Ave. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? We have? Wait, if I understand correctly, someone is about to break the golden rule, forcing me to create a portal in time to bring you here? I must have entrusted you with figuring out who the culprit is. Only... I assume we failed, and you had to start over. Is that about right? If so, what happened? Ah, I see. Look, it's unfortunate, but all that matters now is that you make use of what you've learned and gathered and do better next time. Now, I assume you'll sort me out again for a reason. Ask them. Good. Now, was there something else? Sextus Sentius Imperiosus is my name, though Magistrate is the proper way to address me. Before I wound up here, I was a Decurion in the Cavalry of Imperial Rome. 
helping protect civilization from the barbarians. It's a cavalry officer. I had 30 men under my command. This was my uniform. As magistrate, I usually wear a toga, but today I may need to survive long enough to create the portal for you, so it seemed prudent. My men and I were at the Emporium in Rome as honor guard for a visiting dignitary arriving upriver by barge. Now the port is usually bustling, but just as our guests arrived, waves of people began running toward the river from streets and alleyways in every direction. They were trying to escape a terrible fire. Unfortunately, the crowd sent my horse into a panic, and I remember it losing its footing by the water's edge. The next thing I knew, I was waking up on a riverbank not far from here in the company of some stranger. I went looking for my horse and discovered that lonely temple. You can probably figure out the rest. I was elected seven months ago, uncontested because of my command experience. Since then, there's been growing agitation for another election. They're supposed to be annual, but I agreed to hold it sooner, hoping it would placate my constituents. Unfortunately, it just seems to have emboldened certain elements instead. Very well. If I did, I'd have led these people out of here already. I've had plenty of time to think about it. Let me see if I can sum up my thoughts. I've always considered my guiding star to be the well-being of the Roman people. Our survival and prosperity have always hinged upon honoring the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. Give the gods what they want and we all prosper. Dishonor them and we all die. It's as simple as that. The real enemy in this place is not the golden rule, but human failings. The temptation to slide into degeneracy, greed and hubris. I trust that answers your question. You mean Duilius? Releasing him is out of the question, I'm afraid. That man is a liability we simply cannot afford. Perhaps you're not aware he was caught multiple times, sneaking around in places he should not have been. Look, I can see where you're going with this. You think me cruel. I assure you, that is not the case. You may not be aware of this, but... It was not so long ago, during the Republic, the law of the Twelve Tables would have required that he be killed as soon as he was born, owing to his deformities. Here, we see to it that he has food, water and shelter, and, most importantly, he is able to continue living. A privilege that would be taken away from all of us, were he to be released and commit the crime of trespass. The man has no self-discipline, poor comprehension of what is going on around him, and is an incorrigible rule-breaker. I will not jeopardize the lives of my people so that one man can go free. Now, was there something else? Of course, what is it? Yes? What? An assassin? What are you talking about? Then what are you doing here, talking to me? Why aren't you out there trying to stop him? You'd best go, quickly. As magistrate, I hereby declare him an enemy of Rome and authorize his execution by your hand, forthwith. Any way you can. Despite my weapons ban, it's been my experience one can always find a weapon if one looks hard enough. I don't believe so, no. It's not a crime to carry out the lawful order of a magistrate. So now you're an expert on Roman law, are you? Listen to me. We are cut off from the Empire down here, fending for ourselves on the brink of annihilation. 
If ever there was a time to dispense with legal procedure, it would be now. Think of it as an act of preemptive self-defense. Think of the lives you'll be saving. Thank you. Please act quickly before it's too late. What is it, citizen? All right. Are they? What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman is dying? She's been poisoned. She needs the resin of a plant called Silphium, but that Kulas Kumulates Decius won't give it to me. It's too late. No, no, now it's fine. I can't afford to wallow here. You made it into the palace. I'm impressed. How is Nevia? Oh, I see. Well, what's the treatment? Willowback. I should have known. It was under my nose the whole time. That's very helpful. Thank you. If this works, it should settle Rufius down some. I have some right here. Could you do me a favor and give him some of this? He'll just need to swallow a pinch of it. I'm hoping it will avert disaster. Thank you. I'm really glad you arrived when you did. All right. Well, thanks again for helping remove the thorn from the lion's paw. The spirit of Androcles smiles upon you. Don't you just love springtime?
I have nothing to say to you, Kaput Mada. A new face. Ave, and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Interesting. I'm not sure why you're telling me, but you've come to the right person. Did you find a pattern then? What have you noticed? Yes, I also had such an encounter. Sorry. What else? Yes, I suppose that could be something. But then most of us do tend to carry coins on our person, don't we? What else? Yes, I understand many of our friends were carried here by a river current. It's as I feared. I think I understand what poor Livia has been going through. Let me ask you this. Did you happen to encounter a stranger in the forest before you arrived here? And did you happen to catch her name? I see. And was this Karen by any chance wearing a hood? Because I've seen her before. There's something I think you should see. I think you'd better follow me to the baths. Uh, what? How could you know that? And why are you talking to me instead of doing something about it? Please, go and stop him, and come back to me once we're no longer in danger.
Hello? Hello? Have we... met before? Bye bye. Stop right there. I am looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? Thank you. For your service to the Empire, I'll let you live for now, but you'd best make sure our paths don't cross again. Greetings and salutations.
You... you took care of him? An accident? So... it's over? Oh, God. That's such a relief. I really thought we were all going to die. I... I do have a question, though. That shrine, the one I was going to hide in, did you... No, it was going to collapse? I don't understand. Oh, I see. I should probably keep my big mouth shut then. Sorry. I promise, nobody else will ever know what you did. But I know. That was really clever. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Oh, speaking of which, welcome. I'm Fabia. Sorry I was a bit frantic before. Need anything? Oh, there's not much to tell. I mostly just bake bread and try to help out where I can. I suppose it all started about eight months ago. I was living in Rome with my family when I got sick. Terrible timing. My pa had just arranged a husband for me. A fisherman's son. I was about to meet him for the first time when I came down with an awful fever. I spent the next week in bed. Pa paid priests to make offerings to Asclepius, a white rooster, then a goat. But nothing worked. In the end, they decided I'd do better outside the city. Clean air in the countryside would do me good, they said. But after about a day in a carriage on the Appian Way, I was getting worse, not better. I remember closing my eyes for a bit, and I guess I must have fell asleep, because when I opened them again, I was in a forest by a river. I suppose the driver took off with his fee and left me for dead. Can't say I blame him. I wouldn't have wanted to catch what I had either. Anyway, I went searching for help, stumbled across the trapdoor temple, and here I am. Oh yeah, I suppose you're right. Hadn't really thought about it. But the gods are mysterious and powerful. Who knows what their plans are for us? What? You've been here a few moments and you're desperate to get out already? Why not give the place a chance before you try to leave? Good people here. Galerius works hard on the farm so I can put food on our tables. And Lucretia tries to keep us healthy. My friend Georgius is always mending our clothes. And Virgil makes sure these old walls don't fall down around us. Well, he... he does his best. I'm just saying, there are worse places you could live out your days. Well, I can tell from your funny accent you're not from around here, but that doesn't mean you don't belong, does it? Oh, I try not to worry about it. I mean, if people are nice to each other, we won't have anything to worry about, will we? Thanks. And I like your teeth. They're so white. And your clothes. Oh, I bet my friend Georgius would like to get a look at you. And I'm sure he'd love to chatter about the golden rule with you too. He'll be just across the forum in his shop. All right. Thanks again for taking care of our problem. I won't forget it. You there. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I couldn't help but notice that fine bow you're carrying. No idea how you managed to get your hands on it, especially in the light of our dear old magistrate's ban, but I'm impressed. And before you ask, no, I wouldn't dream of trying to buy it from you. I have no use for a wooden bow myself. But I would like to propose a joint business venture of sorts. Tell me, do you have any idea how people here end up as golden statues? And here I was thinking I was the only one to figure it out. In any case, supposedly one or two of those arrows is enough to turn a full-grown man into gold. Now, of course, that is a travesty. A terrible, horrible waste of human life which has to be stopped. And yet, on the other hand, I can't help but think of a tale told by that Greek fella Aesop. The goose that laid the golden egg. With the ability to transmute organic matter into gold, one could create infinite wealth. 
Use your imagination. Golden animals, insects, trees and plants. The Midas touch without the drawbacks. We are talking riches beyond imagining. And even if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, half of infinite wealth is still infinite. Interested? Look, I might have skimmed over that one, but don't be so pedantic. Are you interested or not? Oh, I'm not suggesting we use such a bow on people. There's no profit in breaking the golden rule. Excellent. So the first question is, how do we get our hands on one of those golden bows? Now, I have a plan, but first, tell me, are you familiar with the story of the goddess Diana? No problem, allow me to explain. Diana is our goddess of the hunt, the moon, and the underworld, depending on who you ask. The one thing priests and poets agree on is that she carried with her a golden bow and a quiver of golden arrows. And it just so happens that there is a shrine of Diana in this very forum with a prominent statue of the goddess herself. And would you like to guess what she's holding in her hand? Precisely. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in that temple staring at it, trying to figure out how to retrieve it without breaking, you know what? Oh, gods, no! If you tried that, we'd all be dead within moments, I'm sure. No, here's what I propose. You give your bow to me, I cover it in a thin layer of gold leaf, and we create a replica of a golden bow. Then, you enter the shrine, extinguish the braziers, and under cover of darkness, swap out the fake for the original. It's not theft, exactly. It's more of a... a trade. But make no mistake, this is a dangerous path, and there's no way of knowing where it will lead. But in my experience, all the best adventures begin with a risky first step. Now, you must have questions. Ask away. Because the gods would see you, of course. Hence, my proposal. I'm more of an ideas man, whereas you're obviously the more resourceful and heroic type. I have complete confidence in you. When Prometheus stole fire from the gods and became a hero to all mankind, do you think he was worried about the danger? Only because he was silly enough to get caught. So, are you in, partner? Wonderful. Now, if you'll hand over your bow, I can get started applying a layer of gold leaf. This is a quality weapon. Now, bear with me for a moment. And here we are, a gold leaf bow. Now I've gone and unlocked the Shrine of Diana for you, so as quick as you can, head on inside. It's just at the end of the street on the left. May the gods not watch over you.
Is that you, partner? Do you have the bow? Wonderful. Just go ahead and slide it under the door for me and I'll unlock it for you. And yet you did. And now, here we are. With me out here, and you in there. Until you give me my bow. <laughs> no, technically, I never said that. I said, if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, infinite wealth is still infinite. It's hardly my fault if you can't tell the difference between a hypothetical and a promise now, is it? Oh, I do love a good loophole. You're just gonna have to take your chances, I'm afraid. The bow, now. And don't even think about giving me the fake one. I'll recognize my own handiwork. I would reconsider my position quickly if I were you. I'm not sure if you noticed, but you're stuck in there with a hornet's nest, and they can be rather aggressive toward intruders. You know, some say it takes 27 hornet stings to kill a man, but I always wondered how anyone could have known that. Let's find out if they were right, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> 